I just updated Block Blender and it has a few new features. If you don't know what Block Blender is, it's a tool that I made that converts 3D models into Minecraft blocks within Blender. I have a few videos about it you can check out and I'll put the links in the description. Also, an add-on was made by Brian Valdez that allows you to export your Block Blender creations as schematics. So now you can actually bring them directly into Minecraft. And I'll be showing that off also. So the new version is 1.3, and if you download it, open it up, this is what you'll see right here. We'll talk about these gradients, but first I want to talk about what is probably the biggest new feature, and that is multiple image support. So you can now use models that have up to five images. And to show that off, I'm just going to hide everything right here, and I'm going to use the Sketchfab importer add-on to look for a castle. So I'll choose this castle right here and import it. All right, and it's imported now, so just got to zoom in. This one is very small, um, which is another thing that people have been having problems with is really small models, so I'll talk about that too. But um, this one is multiple different objects with a whole bunch of empties, so I just have to join it up really quick, select everything, and hit Control a apply all the transforms. And again, I'm going to hit A to select everything and shift click to select one of the objects right here and hit control J. That will join all of the meshes together. So now we only have one object in here and a whole bunch of empties. To delete all of the empties, we can just select our object and then invert the selection with control I and we can just delete those with X. Now let's just add the geometry nodes modifier on here. Select Block Blender. First thing you'll notice is that it disappears. That's because it's too small. So to see how big your model is, you can hit N to open up the side panel, go to Item. And right now it's going to say zero because we have Block Blender enabled and you know it's basically deleting our mesh. So we, when we turn that off, you can see that this is under a meter big right here. These are the dimensions and our block size is set to one. You can hover over it, it says the size of the blocks in meters. So we have to make this bigger. So we can turn this back on. And this is one of the new features also, is I just have model scale right here. If you want it to be the same scale as Minecraft, you can keep the block size set to one and turn the model scale up. So let's just turn this up. You can see it's already getting bigger. Um, I'll just set this to something like 100 for now. And that's actually like, you know, decent detail. Uh, but right now it's all glass, so uh, that's because we don't have any images selected. If we go over to the material properties over here, you can see that it has a whole bunch of materials. And um, this, is, this was actually kind of a problem before, because if you had multiple materials, you would have to bake all of them into a single image, which can be pretty annoying in Blender, and I know that. Um, it's just that there are some limitations that was making it, you know, I didn't have a whole lot of other options. The way that you can do that is basically just select the first material, and if it's using an image, you find out what the image is. So down here, um, I know that it's plugged into the base color, and this one is just called material base color. Uh, so we can come over here to image one and just select uh, material base color. You can just search for it. And now part of it is appearing. So uh, we have five slots and we have five materials right here, which is pretty convenient. If you have more than that, you might just have to pick and choose which ones you want or you'll still have to bake it. And I know it's inconvenient. And if I can find another way that avoids this process and makes it easier, then I'll definitely do that. But this is the way for now. What you need to do is make sure that you're putting the images in the same order that you see them in here. So let's select point zero zero three down here under base color. You can see that it has like the same name as the material slot right here. All of them actually do. So I know that the second one needs to be zero zero three. You can see that appears now. And we just put them all in in the same order that you see here. If you put them in the wrong order, it won't work right. All right. So now all of the colors are actually matching the images, even though we have multiple images being used, which is nice. And I even put a little spot over here in the directions that tells you how to use the new image options. So I talked about model scale, how you can scale this up if you want. We could change this to like 150 or whatever. This is basically just going to scale, scale your model up visually. If you go into edit mode, your model will still be very small like this. Um, that's just a thing to keep in mind. Another new option is this keep centered option right here, which if we look from the front and we turn it on, basically what it's going to do is center everything horizontally. Um, it should center it, you know, this way too on the Y axis and it's going to lift it up. So the lowest point is at this zero line right here. 
Um, and if you go into edit mode, let's turn these on so I can actually see. If you go into edit mode, select everything and try to move it around, it you can see that I'm like trying to move it around. The blocks might shift a little, but they're not actually, it's not actually moving. So keep centered will lock it into place. And if I turn it off and try to move things in edit mode, um, it will actually move around. We also have this other option if you scroll down a little bit called show height. So this will display how many blocks tall your model is when you turn it on. You can turn it on right there. You can see now this says that it's 118 blocks tall. So this will help people figure out like if their model is too big to actually build in Minecraft. If you don't know the, the Y levels in Minecraft go down to negative 64 and I think as high as like 320. So that's like 384 is like the maximum height of a model that you could possibly build if it's like bigger than that then it just won't fit in the game so right now this even though it's like really big could be built in the game you could actually make this like twice as big now this would be massive but this would still fit in the game which is pretty cool okay so block size used to be called resolution and i thought it was just maybe more clear to call it block size because that's you know how big the blocks are and I also changed uh, Boolean to join all parts. That's another thing that's just, I'm trying to make it more plain English. And down at the bottom for block selection, I made a few new categories. So we have the OR category right here. So I'll just turn everything off except for the OR. Um, and this will just be all of like the, not the, not like the raw iron and stuff like that, but the OR in the blocks. So valuable now doesn't contain that so it's just like um, hard to get blocks and you know the ore blocks and things like that in the last version i added a few also so i added light blocks these are just blocks that emit light i also added falling blocks just blocks you know like sand and things that have gravity and the other one is called unstable so this is going to be things like ice because ice melts unless it's in the right biome um, we have the coral blocks which will die if they're not near water and shulker blocks apparently have this issue where when you're far away they don't render um at the same time as other blocks. So I also categorize those as unstable. If you want to move any of these around into other categories, you totally can um, in the way that I explained in the original how to how to use it video, where you just come over here, turn this on so you can actually see all of the blocks and then you can search for whatever you want. So if you want the shulker boxes, you can just search for shulker and, uh, you know, select all of the ones that you want right here hit M to move and then move them to whatever category you want. You can recategorize things in whatever way you, you see fit. Okay, so let's hide this briefly and turn on the gradients collection. We can talk about the gradients a little. So we have three different tools now, and I was thinking these would probably be very useful for like building reference and things like that. So as soon as you select it, you go over to modifier properties. You can see we have these other modifiers in here with color options. And so all you have to do to use them is select it select the color and then you know change it to whatever you want and it will create a gradient from one color to the next there still is the block blender group over here so if you want you can you know change which which blocks are being displayed um, you can add noise to it and things like that um, you can do whatever you want yeah this one is radial it just goes from the outer ring to the inside this one is linear top to bottom and this one has four different corners so you can change these to like whatever you want one thing that i like to do is choose which blocks you're starting with and which ones you're ending with so to do that you can just select it go over to uv editing now up here you want to select the image that comes with the file it's called full palette block reference and this will just show you you know, the palette, but as blocks, you can just find whatever, whatever block you want. I'll choose this mushroom block up here. What you can do is just zoom in really close like this. So it's kind of filling the screen and then you can change it to full palette. Now they're the same size, these two images. So this will be like in the same exact spot. And to select the color again, just go over to modifier properties. You can hover over the color and hit E and that will create this eyedropper. And that lets you select the color over here. And you can see now we have that mushroom block. We can select the other side now. Let's just turn this back to the block reference and find a block that we want. Let's try this amethyst block right here. So we can zoom in really close. Again, change it to full palette. Come over here, hit E, 
and then select the other side. So now we have a gradient going from there. And depending on the colors you'll choose, you'll get um, you know varying degrees of how complex it is. I also do have some of these turned off. So if we wanted, we could just turn all of them on and we'll get more blocks in here, but you're gonna have some like um, shulker boxes, TNT, you know, coral, things like that, that you might not wanna build with. So you can, you know, decide that on your own. I just wanna try another one just for fun. So I'll select this shroom light right here and maybe something a little more dark like this brick right here. Now that's a pretty interesting gradient. Let's talk about the schematic exporter now. So the schematic exporter is made by Brian Valdez and it can be downloaded from Gumroad. And just to be transparent, this is a third party tool. I didn't ask for it to be made or commission it or anything like that. Brian took it upon himself to make a tool that everyone was asking for. So when you download it, you're supporting his work. So if you download the exporter, make sure that you're using the one that's compatible with 1.3. Installing it is easy. You just go to edit, preferences, add-ons, you hit install, and then you find the file that uh, you downloaded. Here it is right here. You just hit install and make sure that this is checked. Um, I do know there is one thing about it that it's more stable when you have make instances turned off. And I think at the time of recording this, you can export with make instances turned on, but there are a few things that you have to do to make sure that it works properly. So either all of these need to be turned on or they need to be turned on in order without any gaps. So if you turned on like the first three right here and then you also turned on or, I think it would like mess up some of these or ones because there are gaps in between. So that's just a thing to keep in mind. Make sure that this is centered first. So to export, you can just select it, go to File, Export, and then at the bottom, there's a new option called Export Minecraft.Skim. So then you can just choose where you want to put the schematic. And just to show that it works, I'll open it up in Minecraft. And I'm using an add-on called Lightmatica that lets you import schematics into your worlds. So I just went to my Minecraft folder and there's a folder called Schematics that you know is there when you're using that mod. And I just put all of the schematics in there. So with Lightmatica, I'll just load in the schematic and hit the load schematic button. It will give you this error, but I know that it works fine. So just hit escape. And then we just need to place this where we want it. So with Lightmatica, you can just uh, place blocks where you see them in here. It's just like a, a ghost image. You can actually use this in survival also. But if you're in creative mode, you can also just paste it. So here is our castle. I also tried importing a few other models. If you want to check out the new Block Blender update, you can find the link in the description, and I'll put the link to the schematic exporter also. That's it. Bye.